Welcome to another episode of Pooches at Play. I feel like this one's a really special one because we've got 17-year-old Angel here with us. And the 12-year-old Chubbs. I'm really looking forward to this. Because <laughs> I'm learning all about taking care of aged dogs. That's right, we've got Dr Mel talking pet health and I'm going to be giving some training tips as well. So sit back and enjoy this rather special show. Yeah. You just snotted all over me. <laughs> Good work. As is of the job. Yeah. <laughs> if you bring your new puppy home for the first time or even an adopted dog, you want to make sure that your house is safe and secure. Now, you might remember the beautiful chaos and the beautiful <laughs> Chloe from last series. And this is the adorable 12 week old mayhem. <laughs> oh, it's no. okay. You can get down, yeah. buddy. Yeah. Now, Chloe, you're leaving these guys with your parents while you go away. Yes. All right, so I we, we want to make oh. sure that he doesn't escape. <laughs> yes. And they don't get into any trouble. So let's go inside yes. and check the place out, shall Definitely. we? Definitely, let's go. Come Come on, through. Through. Where are you, you gorgeous little thing? Come on, mayhem. Oh, Good yes. Boy. Rightio, so first of all, cords, puppies love to chew. Okay. And any yep. electrical cords are really dangerous, phone yep. cords, all of that. So a puppy would love that. It's heaven. Another puppy heaven chewing, our cushions and our blankets and everything lying around. And if you don't want him on the couch, then uh, we might need some barriers as well. Okay. We want to keep all medication away. We want to make sure, though, any toxic chemicals are kept far out away. So ibuprofen is really bad for dogs. It can kill them. So we want to make sure okay. that anything Whoa. like that is kept away. Very Hoping that food is for me. Definitely is. Awesome. Peace lilies though, toxic for dogs as well. Uh, other plants like azaleas. You can see some gardenias out there. They're really toxic for dogs as well. So make sure you have a look at those plants and just check around the home to make sure there is none laying yep. around. Again, very beautiful room. I can see one cord over there. So we just might, if he, he looks like he's gonna chew, we just need to hide them yes. all away. And this puppy, this is heaven, I'm gonna pull it off. Things like this then, and they might not hurt him, but for a small puppy, that could be a hazard. But also your mum might not want that no, broken. No, <laughs> nothing broken. All right, so get that up. Shoes and socks, again, puppies love these. And do you know how many puppies have to go into emergency to have their stomach operated on to pull out socks all the time? So you're gonna watch things like that, undies. Toys, bits of Lego, bottle tops, balls, anything that puppies just want to chew and can digest, yeah. watch those as well. Okay, let's have a look. Shall we have a look, Chaos? What have we got out here? Uh, again, those toxic chemicals uh, need yes. to go away. See another piece, Lily. Oh, oh, someone's been doing some handiwork. Again, so we need to think about things like a puppy or like an anxious or nervous dog. Cords to chew. I've never used one of these before, but you know, things like that. Could have had a dog. Um, and puppies, this is heaven. So little things like this, anything little and lying around is a real hazard. So we do just need to think like a dog. Always make sure that your pool fences, of course, are closed, they're secure. This one's all right, uh, not too bad. But what we want to do, if you have a pool at home, make sure there's no holes and that your puppy can't get its head under. Because if a puppy can get their head under, they can get their body under. So we want to be careful. Also, if you live in an apartment building, same goes there. We want to make sure that any barriers do not have any holes because they can get through the smallest bit. And also we want fences to be really high. Um, he's only little, Mayhem's yes. only little at the moment, but you'll be surprised how high dogs can climb. Some dogs, breeds, can actually climb six feet. But what we might do if we find that Mayhem is a bit of a jumper, some lattice that leans over is really yes. good for jumping dogs. So breeds like Kelpies and Border Collies, if they are prone to jump or get bored, they could go over a fence. So we want that lattice coming inwards. Okay. Love the barrier. He could still get through though. Yes. He gets stuck behind the shed, so watch those things. The hose here, yes. that's a nice chewing thing. But other than that, I'm pretty happy. They've done a pretty good job. They have. It's a very nicely oh, manicured house I think they've gone too. overboard, that's think, for sure. Well, let's go eat that food. Yeah, let's give it a good old shot. And where are you going to? There's a few things to consider in a multiple pet household when you're bringing home a new puppy. Ensure the pup has a quiet, settled experience when entering the house to give them time to sniff around and check out the surroundings. Children will be understandably excited, but they should be encouraged to just sit down and allow the puppy to come to them with a gentle pat, a treat and a calm voice. Your other dog should be introduced to the pup in a controlled manner, allowing plenty of space between them. And with some dogs, neutral territory can be helpful for first encounters. Use treats or other rewards to help create a positive association with the new family member, rewarding calm behavior and good interactions. If you have a cat, 
have them in separate rooms or areas with the doors closed for a few days so that they can sniff and smell each other under the door. You could also use a pheromone diffuser or catnip to help keep the cat calm. Once comfortable, always give the cat somewhere up high to retreat to and allow observations from a vantage point and never force animals to interact. If you're going out, always ensure that there's a barrier between other animals until you're sure that there aren't going to be any problems. For some animals, that barrier may always be needed. Never favour one dog over the other. Take it slowly and give senior pets some time out, ensuring any aches and pains from osteoarthritis or other niggling issues are taken care of before the puppy arrives. As your puppy may have only had its first round of vaccinations, it may not be fully protected from the core diseases, canine distemper, hepatitis and parvovirus. So ensure all other dogs in the household and any playmates are up to date with their vaccinations. It's best to avoid areas where there are lots of dogs, like dog parks, cafes, and communal dog bowls, or just pick your dog up when you're in those areas. Vaccination regimes differ slightly depending on the area, so it's best to check with your local vet about when it's safe to get out and about. Ensure parasite protection is up to date as well, to keep them safe from fleas, ticks, and intestinal worms. NextGuard Spectra will provide them with protection from these and other common parasites and can be given to puppies from eight weeks of age or over two kilos. And remember to enjoy the time with your new puppy in the home as they grow up so quickly. Most puppies and many adolescent dogs love to explore and chew, so it's no surprise they steal household objects. Socks is a big one, aren't they? And many puppies end up in emergency surgery after ingesting one. Often when you try to retrieve them though, it turns into a game of chasey, which is the last thing we want, as this encourages it further by giving your pup the attention they crave. Even if you yell at them, it's still giving them attention. Grabbing them or threats of punishment can actually make them more possessive as well, so we want to avoid that. Of course, we should be teaching our dogs leave it or yuck as soon as possible, though that's for another tip on another day. The key is to find something that motivates them more than what they have stolen, so they choose to take the better offer. If the motivation is fun and attention, for example, then you must not chase or shout after them. Instead, when the puppy looks towards you, excitedly say, good puppy, come, show me. Keep up the praise as the puppy approaches. Entice them with a treat, and when the puppy drops it, say, good dog, sit and give them the reward. Ain't that right, Dust? <laughs> For the hard-headed juniors, though, who only want the chase, simply turn your back and walk away. That's what I do with Vindy. I sometimes even run off so that he comes chasing after me. Then I turn excitedly around, flop to the ground, and offer him the treat. Then, usually that does the trick, or at least gets in close enough to do a fair trade the moment it drops. Ball or sock or treat, what one do you want? Make sure you don't ever turn it into a game of tug of war though. If they start to pull it, hold very still or even let go, say a firm no, and when they stop pulling, good boy, and then offer the treat. Food items can be tough though, so you must find a higher value reward. So a larger offering like a milky, milky stick here, or a chicken stick, they can be a decent trade-off, these guys want them. <laughs> if they're still not biting though, excuse the pun, then something like a Vita Pet Chicken Tender will convince even the most hard-headed dog to give it up. They're real chicken, which is really high value to a food-motivated dog. For puppies, give them a soft chicken tender and no artificial colours and only natural preservatives. So, for a quick recap, never chase or play the game. Offer a decent trade-off in the form of a treat. Reward them every time they voluntarily drop the item and start to teach them give or leave it when they do. For more puppy tips and tricks, head to Vita Pet Central. As the dogs get older, we notice that they slow down a bit, they get grey like beautiful angel here, and they tend to get a little bit sore. What else happens? Oh, so look, as they get older, obviously there's, you know, the body changes. So they're going to be starting to get arthritis and then sometimes, you know, they can get weight gain if they're not doing as much exercise or they can start losing weight if there's specific diseases that are going on. Can we slow that process down naturally? Yeah, look, we try to. So we're looking at the age of the animal. So larger dogs tend to be considered mature from about four and smaller dogs a little later. So that's kind of the age that we're looking to change the diet and consider things for ageing. As they age, it's the inflammatory process that kind of worsens things, and that's when we're looking at what can be put into a diet. Like supplements or something like that? Yeah, so Big Dog considers like 
everything you know in, in their food. So they're looking at like adding fish and sardines for high omegas. They're looking at having flaxseed for high omega-3 content as well. There's also turmeric in there and you want to have fiber, which is vegetables and you know, fruits and vegetables. Right. Big Dog has specific, you know, formulas. So they have like well-being as well as sensitive skin, which can both be used for, you know, older animals. Well-being is lower in fat, which can help with specific diseases like pancreatitis, but it also has a lot of supplements that are added to it, kind of helping with the aging process to help with organ decline and things like that, being a natural way of kind of supporting the body. Whereas sensitive skin, it's higher in omega-3 content, it's higher in fat content, which can, which can actually help with like supporting co cognitive decline within animals. So that's like, you know, dementia and things yeah. like that by adding that higher fat content, which can help the brain, you know, support itself rather than degrade over time. What else do we need to be looking for on their diet? So the things you'd be looking for, uh, you want to make sure that there's a high antioxidant level in there. You also want to make sure that there's like, you know, supplements in there in the diet that are free inflammation, like turmeric is a good one. Uh, and thirdly, like there are some products like Big Dog that have fermented things in there. So by having a fermented product in there, it's actually providing more bacteria, like beneficial bacteria, um, which is promoting your microbiome for the animal, which in turn helps with their immunity. Okay, and once if you've got diet sorted, what else can you do around the house? The main things are like things at home. So you make sure they've got a comfy bed, you can get some natural arthritis supplements, uh, and just make sure you don't do any vigorous exercise and they just have time to rest, but they still want to go out and do stuff. Yeah. With age, the declining, you know, in their brain kind of thing. So you want to make sure that they've got like that stimulation. You want to make sure that they've got stuff to do still um, because the way to kind of keep them mentally active and keep them going is by stimulating them with toys and walks and still, you know, showing them new things. Like rather than just being like, oh, we've got an old dog, you know, he rests at home. You still want to take them out and do yeah. everything with them. Um, it's more so that you're making sure that they still have that quality of life rather than being that pet that just sits at home. Yeah, exactly. Like Angel and Chubbs. Angel's 17 and taken off, can't even get him back. And then Chubbs, who knows where Chubbs has gone? Yeah, Chubbs is just going to get some snacks, hence the name. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you'd like to find out more about taking care of an aging dog, check out the Big Dog website. Thank you, Duncan. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs>
even if it's on promotion. Visit the website for details. The healing and anti-inflammatory benefits of pawpaw for us humans are pretty well known. I use a natural balm every day to protect and keep my lips soft. Can't you tell? It should be no surprise then that an all natural pawpaw balm is great for our dogs too. Though, of course, not on their mouths. It can be used to protect their paws and noses from dirt and bacteria, extreme hot and cold weather conditions, and heal cracked dry skin and damaged skin. Also, if you have a dog with skin folds, you know what a struggle it can be to keep them clean and bacteria free. So you need to clean them daily with a dog specific antibacterial wipe and dry them before applying the DGG Pore Balm to help soothe and protect their skin from bacteria. Of course, you want your Pore Balm to be completely safe for your dog as they are likely to want to take a lick. So the DGG Pore Balm is the perfect non-toxic choice for dogs. It contains natural enzyme exfoliants that can help with dry, flaky or itchy skin and can help dogs suffer from hot spots, bites, scratches, and other health conditions, including diabetes or hyperkeratosis, that can make their feet sore, rough, and cracked. By applying it to their sensitive areas, it's not only a great first aid solution, but can also help protect them from further damage. The DGG Pore Balm is full of natural papaya extract, vitamin E and C, and is non-toxic, Australia-made, and cruelty-free. Available at pet stock and other specialty pet retailers nationally. <laughs>
people, if not properly socialised. Or very loving and licking. <laughs> <laughs> so early socialisation is a must, as is obedience training, as the last thing you want is a Great Dane pulling you along at top speed or jumping all over people or other dogs. They don't do well though at being left alone, so they do need a lot of human company and a house and yard with plenty of space and room to move around as well as a big couch. And you must be prepared for the high food bills because of course Great Danes eat a lot. Goodness me, they sure do. <laughs> and as a giant breed, they have important dietary needs for proper development of bones and joints. So make sure you chat to your vet about <laughs> nutrition. In terms of grooming, they have light shedders, so are easy to maintain and <laughs> come in a variety of colours, including male, like Banks here. Despite having these long legs, they only require moderate exercise, but at least 30 minutes each day. Puppies and adolescents will need more to help burn up those calories, but no long runs for at least 18 months to help their bones and joints develop properly. Again, due to their size, they're at risk of bone and joint diseases such as hip dysplasia and osteoarthritis. And of great concern in the breed is gastric torsion or bloat where excessive gas builds up in the stomach, causing the stomach to stretch and twist, trapping gas and leading to irreparable damage of the stomach. Mm. Affected dogs can die within hours, so it's crucial to get them to the vet as soon as you suspect that it might be happening. Actually, better still speak to your vet about preventative measures because there are some and the symptoms to help reduce their risk. That's absolutely right. They can also suffer from cardiomyopathy, a heart disease, bone cancer and hormonal diseases, including adrenal and thyroid problems. That's why you should always research and know the specifics about the breed of dog you are considering. Absolutely. Especially That's what like thanks his mum did. <laughs> To learn how HIF Pet Insurance can help your pet in times of need, visit hif.com.au. Want to win a Pawson prize pack valued at over $2,000? One lucky person will win a year's supply of Vita Pet treats, Big Dog Pet Foods, Next Guard Spectrum Monthly Chews, a $250 pet stock gift voucher, DGG Grooming and Apparel, and a year's subscription to Dog TV. Plus, there's five consolation prizes of my book, Each Play Love Your Dog. To enter, sign up to our E! News and tell us the name of one of the charities featured in this series. All entries also receive a free ebook, so visit poochesatplay.com. Well, as you can tell, we've had a pretty hectic episode, so we decided to stay in the exact same spot and let Angel sleep a bit more. That's right. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot as well, and we'll see you again next week. See you next time. <laughs>